Here's my master plan and everything you need to know for an optimal Dragonflight gold making launch. I'll cover leveling, professions power leveling, profession combos, factions, and even how to build towards your very own alt army or what I like to call an alt factory. So first of all, in terms of leveling up your character at the launch of Dragonflight, there are a couple of crucial tips to take note of, especially if you plan to level some alts. So the first tip that I have is that it'll likely be much better to level one character level 70 first before starting to level up any of your other alts. If anything, you might just want to park them in the capital city Valdraken, but not spend significant amounts of time leveling them up before your first character hits 70 at least. And this is because while you can still benefit from things like rested bonuses and spending each of your characters rested EXP more efficiently by spreading it out, it'll actually likely be ideal to level one character to 71st to be able to unlock the sort of threads of fate if you're familiar with Shadowlands that's the alternate leveling route other than having to follow the campaign which is going to be faster for your alts. And next up a second pro tip that I have is that for professions first time crafts and if you're gathering gathering works as well but especially first time crafts if you have crafting professions and this does work for if you have two different crafting professions actually it grants a lot of exp i believe one first time craft counts for about two quests or so and thus if you actually bank up a lot of these first time crafts you can actually take one character from about level 68 and a half all the way to level 70 just in one go by doing all the available first time crafts that you can learn from the trainer and again that's just roughly counting the amount of exp you can get from one crafting profession right so if you have two you can bank up even more and definitely definitely not save up most of your first time crafts for after a character hits level 70 right because that'll make you waste the exp now for another quick leveling tip, and this probably has been said many times before, but it's to pick up all the dragon riding glyphs which will help enhance your dragon riding as early as you can. Now in the beta you were actually able to do this before hitting max level, in fact you could start collecting them once you set foot on the dragon isles and it actually takes less than 30 minutes to get them all. But my prediction is that in the live version of Dragonflight, this might actually become an endgame activity in that you can only unlock it after you hit max level or are close to max level. But if I'm wrong, and I hope I am, you should go and collect them all once you get onto the Dragon Isles. And there are plenty of guides out there, I'll link one right below in the description box for you to do just that. Now Dragon Riding Glyphs are in fact account wide, which makes them even more important if you plan on leveling more than one character. And that is indeed my focus because my master plan is to eventually set up a so-called alt army or alt factory, right? And speaking of which, another important tip for alt friendliness is the fact that a lot of the reputation renown rewards, so again, renown is a similar system to Shadowlands, except a lot of these rewards will become account-wide, save for the specific profession recipes though. Those are not account-wide and will have to be obtained with each character that has that specific profession. And so depending on the profession combo that you take on a given character, you want to actually prioritize different factions, right? And Penguin R2GT, however you pronounce that YouTube channel, but anyhow, she did an excellent guide on the best profession combos based on the number of and viability of profession recipes that come from the same factions. Meaning that by taking these specific profession combinations, you'll actually be able to prioritize leveling one or two factions first before you even have to focus your time and energy on the others. And so I will link her video down below in case you're interested, although I would personally be likely prioritizing other types of profession combos, and I'll get to that later. But still on the topic of factions, another important thing to know is that Renown, after you reach level 10, starts becoming quicker in that you get like a Renown or Reputation boost uh, speed up for your alts once one of your characters reaches Renown level 10 with any faction. And so hitting Renown level 10 for an important faction, for example, if one that has profession recipes for multiple characters, would likely be ideal for your alt army. And now with that, moving on over to some profession tips. One of the revelations that I had is that profession leveling in terms of skilling up your profession talent tree and getting so-called profession knowledge in order to put points into that tree is actually somewhat time gated, right? Behind things like weekly quests, uh, limited quantity gathering tokens or crafting orders, uh, quests, and other things like turn-ins that are all sort of limited by the week. 
This crucially means that one cannot simply buy or power level their way all the way to the best endgame crafts, right? Not to mention there's also a quality system now. So even if you have the recipe for something late game, you might not have the required skill and second like stats, right? From your talent tree and whatnot to be able to craft the highest quality, which is going to be what a lot of the uh, end game min maxers will want. And this likely means that the optimal way to level up professions if you consider multiple alts and multiple professions and also the most uh, profession knowledge that you can gain in a given period of time instead of focusing on one character where obviously their profession knowledge is going to be capped, right? If you have multiple characters, your profession knowledge will still be capped, but you'll be able to progress through and gain talent points at a, you know, double the speed, so to speak, right? If you have, say, two max level characters or triple the speed if you have three max level characters. You'll be able to progress through the trees simultaneously on multiple characters if you just do those like quick and easy weekly turn-ins or quests, right? Which by the way, these uh, quests and other things unlock towards the end game. I believe the profession quests unlock at level 68. And that's not even all because there's an important buy on pickup material called the Artisan's Metal, which you'll crucially also gain by getting deeper into your talent tree. By specking into you know each point, you also gain some Artisan's Metal to crucially spend on some important and lucrative crafts, right? And so by having multiple characters to gain this with, not only the talent points but also the artisan's metal crafting material, you'll be on your way to extreme efficiency. And if you're interested, I also did a video covering all the endgame systems, including all the ways you can gain profession knowledge and by extension, artisan's metal. So I'll link that video down in the description box below for your reference as well. Now, last but not least, let's talk about my favorite profession combos, as well as how you can set up your very own alt factory, so to speak. Now, first of all, there likely isn't just one best build, right, across even multiple characters, as a lot of this will depend on your personal preferences and your playstyle. For example, if you want to do more gathering and want a more simple strategy, double gathering on a Drakthir is likely going to be extremely good and make you a lot of gold as well. And another example, and what I personally prefer, is a more set and forget strategy. So it's looking like crafting orders are not only going to be pretty decent in terms of you can just log in theoretically anyway and just knock out a few crafting orders because there's actually a limited amount, I believe, that you can do per, I think, day. Uh, but besides that, you can also just list some you know, lower ranked or lower item level items that are not buying on pickup. Again, things that you sell with crafting orders are buy on pickup, hence the crafting order system, but they're also still like BOEs and stuff you can sell in the auction house. So I prefer a more set and forget strategy by selling gear and in particular things like weapons, jewelry. So I personally would like to specialize in uh, weaponsmithing on a blacksmith. And previously on my other video, I actually covered in more depth my favorite profession combos, at least at the beginning of Dragonflight, which were going to be blacksmithing plus leatherworking. And then on another character, I was going to do um, jewel crafting and inscription because jewel crafting actually makes rings and necklaces. And I just realized that they also make trinkets. So that's definitely going to be a huge profession for me. Um, but that's going to be on my second character. But another one is Inscription because they actually make staves and I think staves are extremely underrated because they're actually um, usable by a lot of different specs in the game. Um, and of course blacksmiths which are sort of your uh, jack of all trades and are able to create lots of different types of weapons and um, armor as well. Not to mention they can also make a large variety of profession tools which will play an important role for you know people who want to get serious about professions like me. And also speaking of another jack of all trades, or rather both of them are more like masters of many, but leatherworking is going to be great because it covers both leather and male armor with the new Drakthir looking like a fairly popular class and also being male wearers. And if you're interested, I've linked that original video where I explained my specialization choices in terms of how I even want to prioritize specking into the talent trees for each profession that you can check out in the description box below. But going beyond these recommendations, there are actually a few more interesting profession choices that I believe are going to be very good for especially if you're an altaholic or just want to set up your very own alt factory. And those are alchemy, tailoring, and jewel crafting. While perfectly viable and competitive professions in and of themselves, these are actually especially well suited for alts and if you especially have lots of alts in that they all have daily cooldowns. 
Alchemy should be no surprise because they traditionally had so-called transmutes, which I believe if you spec into or further into these transmutes, you can actually reduce the cooldown of them. So that might be really exciting if you just want to log in and out and just do a quick button press. And the same can be said for tailoring, which gained cooldowns for different types of cloth bolts. And you can actually have multiple tailors even to supply the two different types of bolts for high-end gear. And last but not least, jewel crafting will also have something similar in a cooldown that turns uncommon gems into rare gems, which will actually um, take a few more profession knowledge points to get into, but nonetheless can be a great alternative to the other two uh, professions, especially if you're going to be using jewel crafting for crafting some of the other aforementioned crafts. And in general, if you plan to play your alts a bit more than just logging in for daily cooldown, I do believe that having at least one of each crafting profession is going to be extremely beneficial because my final tip is that in Dragonflight, there's going to be a lot more interdependency between professions in that even some of the flasks that alchemists use or rather all the flasks, um, the base empty flasks that they use will have different qualities to them with the higher qualities being provided by jewel crafters, right? Among many other crafting materials that are then also crafted by various uh, professions, not to mention the various uh, profession accessories and tools that you'll be able to equip to boost your profession uh, skill and effectiveness that are also crafted and provided by other professions. And that is pretty much my plan for Dragonflight launch to gold making domination early on in the expansion. Let me know what you think in the comment section below if you have any other cool tips to add and I'll definitely respond to your comments as well. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching, happy playing Dragonflight, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.